Hey guys, well we're kind of excited here because we're headed out for a day of some spring fishing. It's been a while since we've actually spent much time on the water. <laughs> yeah, I think we had one day already, already a few on the dry on that just yeah. a couple days ago, but yeah, you know, here that, we are. That's about it, right? <laughs> After five months on off, well off the water, we've been really busy over the winter uh, editing video, catching up on the mountain of footage that we have. You know, hopefully COVID doesn't last too much longer. We got maybe another two, three winters of footage that we could share but i'd rather start you know us filming this way just put us put you on the water come along for the ride and see what happens today kind of thing exactly right the conditions are looking good i mean we're we're talking to basically 11 degrees celsius so kind of you know 50. mid low 50s mid 50s and uh we know the water's low and clear and hey we just want to go and and give it a go and have some fun well let's let's hope i don't know it's funny because you know right now i'm thinking it'll be nymphing hopefully not too deep in nymphing Try. It's really clear, gin clear, pre-runoff conditions. So I, I suspect we'll be doing nymphing the slots and riffles, especially any water that's got broken overhead cover because it's not a breath of wind, not a cloud in the sky. It's bright, low, clear conditions. And my money sitting at, in my driveway at home right now says that we're going to have to go long, uh, long leader to a probably three, four foot nymph setup, light, um, smaller flies and broken overhead water choppy troughs that kind of stuff and if we're really lucky we'll get some early black tiny winter black stone flies and some midges maybe a blue winged olive and maybe a riser or two if we stay out there long enough yeah i mean we'll we'll be trying to target some active fish or hope for some active fish yeah. that's for sure and maybe even sight we'll fish. keep it yeah you might be you able to spot know, a few right? Yep. That's right. Exactly. If we can get some high vantage points, which we love to do. I mean, as you guys know, we love the over the shoulder stuff that we can accomplish and, and kind of share exactly with you what's going on. So, you know, we always try for that. All right. Well, what do you say? Let's get it. Let's give her. It's pretty neat to be going to a section hey, today that we haven't fished in a little while. Actually quite a while. Um, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> almost <laughs> yeah. laughable. We moved down here three years ago. Yep. And I haven't been on the section. No, not, and certainly I have, but not with yeah. you. So, anybody got a penny? Oh no, right, there are no pennies anymore. Yeah, it's always, it is, and it's always such a good pool here. I bet we will see something. Watch out for any loose barbed wire you don't see. So I probably won't stay all day here. Wonder if I'm too deep, you know? Yeah, too aggressive with the tungsten. There's one. Come on, little buddy. There we go. And we'll just flip him here. There he goes. Oh, excellent. There we go. That's a nice fish. That's a great fish. Yeah. Boy, just in that perfect slot there on the drop off. <laughs> that dog behind me is all excited about it. Oh, looks like, oh, we got him wrapped about three feet into my tippet and leader. That's a really nice fish. Really nice fish. There we go. Yeah, gorgeous rainbow. Yeah. Just in that really nice overwintering soft water at the end of the drop off shelf. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Okay, so we started the. <laughs> So we started the day down there, and those three dogs, everybody's favorite dogs in Alberta, sitting right there. Uh, if you know where we are, you know the dogs. They're there every single time, and they will not leave you alone. They'll obsess. You know, they're worse than me obsessing about a, a, a sighted or rising fish. Anyway, today we're, we're out here. I'm using a four weight Helios 3F, uh, just a little bit more flex. Because it's early in the season, 
I am using a 9 foot 2x liter. Then I've just tied on 18 inches of 5x right to the end of that 2x liter. The dropper line coming off that liter right where I tie that knot I've just left 4 inches of 5x off of that. Tied a size 12 hair's ear there and at the end of the 18 inches of 5x I've tied a size 12 uh, pheasant tail nymph. Nothing rocket science and my strike indicator is basically just what's that about three feet from the bottom fly so nothing nothing real deep we're just focusing on the riffly choppy trough water and the overwintering pools ice and low water in through here so we're just focused on trying to pick off those fish that are just nosed into those drop-offs under choppy water bright and sunny really low gin clear water so we're just along those drop-offs and seam lines and just working the fish that we can actually get flies and indicators into without spooking them because you know when you think about all this weight landing any kind of flat water is going to go splat you know your splat factor this time of year these conditions really high and you want to try to work with what the river's giving you the conditions are giving you and just we're just targeting on those fish that are just nosed into those riffles and troughs and back there in that pool it was just a gorgeous gravel uh, shelf like that missed it, missed one take and caught a what a 12 inch and maybe a 21 22 inch rainbow whatever that was and you know just cast up reach and on that drift just one little man finish the drift roll up stop and place and it's just methodical up across across up across across up across across and right through the run so dave's just sighted a fish here he went across and and up the bank up there and uh well, you guys can see that and he's just spotted a fish that he's gonna so where from you straight Okay, right below you, Kate. Yeah. So I'm just going to get down below it. So again, just about a rod and a bit above the big boulder and then on your side. Yeah. My side. Yeah. The yeah. Right where you're pointing was good. No, that's a different fish. Really? Yeah. Cool. Go again here. Nice cast. Great drift, right in there. Yeah, I can see them. Nope. Yeah, let that drift. Yep. Yeah, there you go, right over top of it. There. Yeah, I can see that spot, Dave. Right through them. Okay, a bit more weight. That's that's six. <laughs> that's good. Yep. Yeah, so you get this shallow riffle that comes in, and it just starts to deepen up where there's some natural rock right in the bottom there. And Millie's just going over that right now, and that that's the only depth of trough if you look up it's just shallow stuff and as we come in here that just gets deeper the water calms out just a touch and there's some broken rock right on the bottom there and then it just below that turns into just a flat bit of rock with not a lot of holding structure so those four or five fish are right in this pocket right where Amelia is drifting for right now hey yes! Beautiful rainbow. 
So that was a really nice fish. I uh, really enjoyed that moment. Um, Dave had spotted the fish. There was about three or four right in the heart of, of the riffle there. And um, a couple of them were bigger fish. And fortunately, I think I hooked into one of the bigger fish. Nice rainbow. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about actually what I'm using. Um, the leader in total length is about 14 feet down to 4x. And um, I have two flies on. Um, originally I actually had been fishing with a size 12 pheasant tail nymph on the bottom and then above it here by about a foot um, is a little tag end of another little nymph here, the copper tail nymph, and it's about a size 14. And um, I just found that I wasn't actually getting down um, fast enough. I mean, it's nasty wind out here. It ain't sexy casting as you saw, but you know, it's just a, hey, a roll forward straight up to one o'clock on the water. And you know, I, I'm not casting very far. Like I'd say, you know, I may be casting, you know, 20 feet tops, but as soon as it's in the line I want, I'm mending, right? And what was happening though, did a lot of drifts, and wasn't getting a look for them. So I said, hey, I can't be deep enough. And um, so what I wanted to do was just go straight to a different fly and and to go a bit deeper. So what I did is, yeah, believe it or not, San Juan worms, we do we do fish with them. <laughs> um, and, uh, and what I did is the first fish, you might have seen, I had a, a small fish on briefly, it got off. He took the worm. Um, I had seen where he flashed and he took the worm. And then what I decided to do is I, I adjusted it a bit. I had the weight on the very, very bottom, right close to the worm. Personally, I don't think that much matters in terms of look, but I decided to go up about six inches there. It was the very next cast. And it was my very next cast. And funnily enough, I thought, oh yeah, for sure, because of depth, um, the fish, would have taken the bottom fly. Actually, no. That fish decided to move on my top little copper tail. But the point was I had more depth on there because this is a, it's not quite a BB, but it's a, you know, it's a small, a small little um, lead weight. That yeah, because the very first fish that you caught at 14 inch that was on what fly? That was actually on the bottom fly. That was on the original. The what you have? Oh, was it on? No, no, the, not the one. Oh, that, that you lost, very, but very the one first that fish caught. was actually on the bottom pheasant tail. Yeah. 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 So you've done a pheasant tail, a worm, and a copper and tail, a copper pheasant tail, tail yeah. and three different fish. And it's really neat because these fish are only in this one spot. And you know, I've, I did a pan of the of the water from up on the hill, and it's absolutely flat rock below you. And it's too shallow above you and there's about an eight nine yard or meter pocket where there's enough depth and enough calm water and three or four broken rocks and that's where the three or four fish are sitting that's where they're hanging out exactly but yeah uh, we're gonna move on i'm gonna actually use my nice little pocket warmers here because you know you still get cold out here after you've released a fish well yeah it's 50 but, hey, 70 man. kilometer an hour wind and here we are thank god for the bright warm sun and yeah that was a fun moment it was neat to be able to work together with you sighting those fish and then you know me being able to just just keep drifting the fly and it was all about just getting that line yeah and i think honestly it was like if i was two feet too close to the seam on my side wasn't good enough. I had to be, you know, right in the line of where those yeah, fish were. It was like they, they box, are not moving, you four know. Four or five yards by two yards and that's it. And that's right. I mean, this a little is bit. early spring. They're not going to be super <laughs> active. You pretty much have to get it in front of their noses. Nasty wind. And we're just going to go nice and slow in here. And I'm going to convert to the left handed cast. And I'm just going to use it into the wind. And we're going to mend downstream and get it right through the honey spot there. Little distinct advantage. Okay, right hand roll downstream, left hand pause and place. There you go. And then we're going to mend down. So, right hand downstream. And we're just going to go left hand to pause roll in quick downstream mend downstream mend downstream mend see if i roll with my left and it's way up high right and the other way is just to roll it downstream with your right hand let water load and just quick flick place mend 
all sorts of stuff we can do here and I'm not so worried about the drag at the back end roll it downstream water load pause and flick it in lift raise mend in the house right in there bright and sunny not a lot of broken water so can I get down without spooking the living bejeebers out of these things smackos good luck okay you would think that this is the water right here and try to land it on the choppy stuff there you go right in the choppy stuff that covers up everything to do with your your landing your smackos Yep. Yeah, it's a nice rainbow. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he took the big stone fly pattern on the bottom, hey? Yeah. She. <laughs> Looking more like a she. Woo! Hey. Right in the beak, top side of the beak. Get that net wet. And come on, girl. There we go. There we go. Nice fish. Yeah, no, it was pretty fortuitous seeing that squall of stone shuck put on the bigger stonefly on the bottom got it right into that water that choppy water and it was funny i was just commenting to the gopro as i was casting that yeah with because i'm so heavy again at the start of the day we talked about that real bright light in the gin clear this is the lowest flow of the year and you got the brightest light not a cloud barely any wind in this spot and if you think you're going to put a stonefly nymph you know a double 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 size bead on the old tungsten you know i've got the the big double bead on that thing it's big and then i got another tungsten there and if you think you're gonna feather that into flat water and not spook no that's not gonna happen so again at the start of the day when our drive over we were saying you know what in these conditions it's gonna have to be the fish that are active under the current seams in order to feather use that choppy water overhead broken surface and that's where you're gonna be able to get your flies in get them deep right now and guess what that's exactly what's been the ticket today because these are not easy conditions at first all. cast just yep. right into that prime spot yep. and boom absolutely yep great right so that fish i actually cast that a little higher than i wanted to that's the secret don't tell anybody but what i'm going to do is just again feather this stuff just in the inside this time and let's just see that's a little shy on the the lack of choppy stuff right that's just dying on that flat water i'd like to bring that up and just pause and just place it right in the heart there let that drop right down right now and that's about as close to this side as i'd want to be that was just rock and that's the hard part with that indicator wool you need a humongously more wool than i'm using in order to support uh, double tungsten nymphs yeah that's that's just as soon as i just tax the bottom it's sinking that there we go see that should be a fish yeah you'd think so hey nope maybe and again right in the heart a little further you know there's more than two or three other fish maybe two there we go that's a nice fish gorgeous fish yeah really nice rainbow they just can't help but be there this time of year there's no water in the rest of the winter uh sorry there's no water in the in the rest of the river and it all just spills into this big deep hole right so you get you know four or five hundred meters of river uh, summer fish stacked up into a wintering pool and you get a nice shelf with broken rock and guess where they have no choice but to be so that's that's the upside of this gotta remember this is i put 5x on so even though I've got a huge size eight stonefly pattern on there, I still have 5X because of the conditions, that bright, bright light. There we go, nice male looks like. There we go, wicked, awesome, nice fish. There we go, what a gorgeous 
fish, eh? Just beautiful colors, yeah. hey? Okay, nice here spots. We go. Nice. That's awesome. Right in that money spot, eh? And yeah, that's two two fish in, in two really good spots. And that's it for me. I think I want you to fish the upper two thirds or upper half, whatever it is. And yeah. then, you know, we've There's got- There's only so much water along here, right? So And they have to good be stacked. Water. So let's that's get right. you in there. Cause we've, up until now, we've been splitting the river and splitting the fish. So I, yeah, yeah it's I obvious like where they're going to be. So you might as well have a go in yeah. the last good half, upper half of the last good hole. My turn, bugger. <laughs> that's what we're trying to say. So I've just finished tying on this uh, kind of little stonefly nymph, I guess, if you will. Could act as a lot of different things, even, you know, larger mayfly, but obviously in these conditions, more of a stonefly. And that's going to get down on the bottom, and then uh, I've got a slightly smaller little copper tail about a foot above it. So Dave's picked up a couple fish, just literally uh, where my rod is pointing out here, maybe another half a rod length right under that foam. So I'm going to get some casts and see what happens here. Yeah, nice fish, awesome. Just a solid, solid thump to that one. Just gonna bring him now to the tail out. You know, again, I'm keeping my rod kind of angled to the left, putting that sideways pressure. should be able to bring them up here and scoop them in sweet nice fish oh look at that cheek what a beautiful rainbow yeah so we just walked up to this this riffle here riffle run and um i just knew that in the heart of it we were gonna we were gonna get into some fish like it, it was really the classic perfect kind of pool we haven't come across you know the best water today maybe two spots and this is really the third really good spot and dave's already hooked into two and i said hey it's my turn i'm gonna go for it and uh cast maybe a little further upstream from where you had been and slightly further into the heart of the current um just a perfect flow though and i uh, you know I, I drift a couple nymphs through there it decided to take my actually larger size 12 uh, pheasant tail essentially uh, and uh, that pheasant tail is representing you know any kind of little stonefly nymph um, and yeah great beautiful fish loved it I mean for early spring hey man I'll take that every day of the week so back out I go from whence I came it's a little further up here and uh, start to work slightly different water and see what I pick up Next cast, I'll progressively just get one a little, another couple feet, maybe slightly over to the left there. A little quick bit of a mend to my left. Let that drift down. Just a perfect, perfect current speed through there. You know those fish are hanging out just above the bottom. And yeah, again, I'm, I'm only about three feet from my indicator to to my flies or to, at least to the bottom fly and that's a nice looking drift right in that stuff there a few mixing currents nice little drop off zone but that's the spot that's the money spot up in there there we go Yeah, there we go. Nice. Right on. You know, you just know when you know sometimes in fly fishing. You see the drift you want and uh, and you get that gut feeling. I guess that's what I do anyway. And, <laughs> and it's pretty neat. Okay, now go for it. And there's the perfect toss and the perfect catch. <laughs> we might have done that a few times before. 
<laughs> yeah. Doesn't always go that way. I have gotten clocked in the head a few times. <laughs> and again, I'm just going to kind of walk them out. to the surface and scoop them. Sweet. Yeah, another gorgeous colors on that fish. Just beautiful. Yeah, just a really, really pretty fish. Um, I don't know, maybe 16, 17 inches. And, but yeah, look at that cheek on there. Awesome. Just gorgeous. Yeah, let him go. <laughs> ah, fun stuff, man. Yep, when you find a run that is just a perfect flow and that's the best way I can probably describe this particular run is um, it allows those nymphs just to float along very naturally without having to do a lot of mending um, you know obviously with mending you don't want to be pulling the fly out of the zone so you can't be too abrupt with it but you still have to mend you got it you know you see me in the in our other video here just one mend at the beginning and when you can get into a position where you can just do the one mend at the beginning and then most of the drift it just comes along beautifully because it's in just that perfect flow of water um yeah you know fish are stacked in here i'd say the depth i don't know what would you say the depth is in four there feet maybe? The, yeah that's what i was gonna say maybe four or five feet and um drifting it along we've got two i've got two tungsten nymphs one's about a size 12 uh, the other one's size 14. They've been taking the bottom one, the heavier one. Um, really kind of a stonefly nymph. It, it really honestly could be, we're still a little ways from squalas, but we did see one today. And, you know, again, it could be that kind of squala nymph. So, love that fish. Just an enjoyable time. Well, I'm going to get right back out there because God knows there's other fish in there. Yeah, about and... 15 more than <laughs> Right on, man. Quick tip here, uh, whenever I'm pulling line out of my reel, I'm really trying to pull it straight out. You know, you can come along and start to pull this way and you're gonna put a huge gouge eventually in um, your reel right in there. So always try to pull that way when you're pulling line out. Yeah, so start to work a little bit higher up in the zone and be ready. You see how I'm kind of quartering? There's another fish right on. As I said, this is kind of stacked. <laughs> yeah, they're here. But yeah, I will. It's not as big as the last few here, so yeah, I'm just gonna just bring her in. Ah, it's a whitey anyway. Yep. First white fish of the day. Come on, buddy. Here we go. One cast upstream. Now I'm going to work a little further over. Yeah, beautiful little spot right in there. To me, that's the kind of money zone. And you see all the time, whenever we're nymphing, the very first thing I'll do is get try to get my the tip of my rod right down to the water. And obviously you're you're picking up all the slack fly line in front of you. But the key is to ensure that if you get that that rod tip down, you have a far, far greater chance of being able to set the hook 
and as you see I'm always going to set the hook to my left just like that and there's a fish <laughs> yeah there's a few here what a gorgeous run sweet spot in the world I don't have a feel for how big this guy is but about the same size whitey pop him off and yeah there he is and there he goes <laughs> well in such a classically great run you're bound to have a number of those and it's good to see it really is good to see those now what I want to do now is just work work again a little bit more of the top end I'm gonna finish this drift but then I'm going to focus on doing some casts further over to the left there yeah I, I don't like the, the speed at which those flies are going so I'm just going to pick that up one false cast get it out into that sweet part of the run a little further left right under that foam line come on fish oh, maybe I need to be another foot or so left yeah right out in there yeah so when i bring the drift as far as this what i'm doing is a roll cast forward to the sky one false cast back maybe a second false cast to line up and before i actually get a cast too much further upstream i want to get a cast even further over again catch up with any of that slack in this case you know high stick it a little bit just to ensure that you follow along with the rod tip you get that nice drift all the way through that but again i'm trying to work that far seam you can see i've walked a little closer that way i can get a really good connection point to that indicator in case it decides to go down. <laughs> 